trust for all, all our hearts serving now in Hellas to guard this rich and golden house. The king, king Xerxes himself, son of Darius, chose our ranking years to govern his domain. But when will they return? Xerxes, our king, and all his gold clad armament. Our hearts, he our rests, and we prophetic fears. The flower of our aging youth left home, and now run on our rider brings us word of them. From Susa, from Ecbatana, ancient kissing ramparts. From each ancestral door, the Persian force flowed westward, seamen and ships by thousands. Horsemen and footmen, stating a rank of war. The Captains king. of Persian valor, the king's kingly servants. Our mistress, out of fairness. Megabases and Astapes, pressed to their distant goal. Masters of bow and bridle. Artemis, ruler of holy Memphis. A sight to dot the senses, a shock to numb the muscles. With hardiness of soul. Artemis, whose chariot ran right with death. Maestris, Emmaus, that brave bowman. Fierceus, Ferrandages. And Sosanthus, whose four horses flew in his firm control. Next from the Nile, there gathered yet others. Susiskines, the Gastagon. Our mistress, Artemis, and Ariamordus, giver of laws to Thebes, filled the, the Egyptian, Egyptian role. Next to the Nile, the men of sacred Timolus then joined them, bold Thadamus and Mardon, and the of the, the spear, vowing to cast down proud Hellas and bring her bondage near. Such was the flower of our manhood. We the, saw pr the pride of Persian valor. We saw march away. That now grieves with ardent longing, lengthening our despair and lengthening our long days, quaking in our hearts and lengthening long delay. The king led his destroying ranks over the straits to Europe, yoking the sea's neck in a sea of boats. Thus, the great king, in one impetuous bound, launches this myriad of armies in two sweeps on land and sea. Himself, the peer of God, whose race was stone and gold. From the darkness of the guns, glares glory drive his eye. Persian arms no strength can stay, Persian hearts no fear can sway. And yet, while heaven with torturous plan works its will, what mortal man can elude immortal guile? Where is he whose nimble leap lightly creeps the enclosing net? Smooth delusions, flattering smiles, leads but where her trap is. There, where men face his mortal death. Death and doom have caught what they will keep. Long ago, the heavenly powers laid terms upon Persia to seek on land her fame. But we learn another skill, trespass on forbidden sight. Where the storm winds, with the howling seas white. These are the shapes of gloom that now cloak my heart in fear. With each Persian wife sprinkling her bed with tender tears in vain. Come, fellow Persians, gather by this ancient spear of King Xerxes' palace. Counsel is our need. How does Xerxes fare? Wisdom and courage. Has the drawn bow made Hellas quail? Would the bronze head spears prevail? Look! The king's mother! Radiant as God's eyes, immortal Queen Adossa stands. Fall prostrate, Persians, at her feet. Hail our queen! Hail! Darius' wife and Xerxes' mother, hail! Hail! The mother of all hearts, the wife has been. Unless today. The fates have turned their hand against us, and their ancient favour fail. That fear is mine. I too am torn by anxious thoughts. Therefore I have left the golden furnished chamber that I shared with King Darius to tell you my own dread, that our vast wealth may in its rash course overturn that fair peace that Darius built with heaven's help. We hear wealth suffices, but our fear lies in our love. What has our house more precious than its living Lord? Well, how matters stand, you know. Therefore, for this anxiety, give me your counsel, Persians, old and trusted friends. 
for all my hope of honest counsel rests in you. Your word, great queen, is our command. With love and loyalty, take our counsel. Since first my son marshalled his forces and set forth to waste Ionia, every night dreams visit me. Yet never yet so clear a vision as I saw this night that's past. Listen, two women, both finely dressed, one in the Persian style, the other Dorian. Sisters of one race, each had her own inheritance, one Greece, the other Asia. And it seemed these two provoked each other to a quarrel, and my son restrained and tamed them, yoked them to his chariot, fastened a harness around their necks, and one of them, proud of these trappings, was obedient to the rain. But the other struggled, tore the harness from the cart, threw the bridle from her neck, threw Darius to him to the ground, and there my son lay on the ground, and by his side his father, Darius, stood and pitied him. Xerxes looked up and saw him and tore his robes. Such was the dream I saw this night. I rose and washed my hands in the clear flowing stream, and as I stood, I saw an eagle fly from refuge to Apollo's hearth. I watched speechless in terror. Then a falcon came and swooped with rushing wings, and with his talons clawed the eagle's head. While he These sights have struck my eyes with dread, your ears no less. But be assured of this, if my son conquers, he will be all men's wonder. And if he fails, no counsel shall hold him to account. Winner or loser, while he lives, my son is Persia's king. Lady, we will not counsel you to cause you undue fear, nor to raise hope. Pray humbly to the gods and ask them to avert what evil omens you have seen. To fearful for you and for your son Xerxes, and for all your friends and Persia too. And next, to pour libations to the earth and to the dead. To entreat your husband Darius, who you saw tonight in your dream, and your son Xerxes, to bless you from the dead. And all this is not a blessing to keep shrouded in subterranean darkness. This brings forth our counsel from certain the judgment to loyal hearts, for we predict that these omens, good or bad, all, all will be well. My first thoughts are truest, and you, my first interpreter, have read my dream propitiously, for my son and the royal house may all be for the best. I will do as you say, and make libations, but, but tell me, Athens, near Marathon. Yes, Westwood, where the sun god sinks its fainting fires. But why should my son seek to make this town his prey? Athens, once conquered, he is master of all Hellas. Hath he such rich supply of fighting men? Yes, soldiers who once struck Persian arms a fearful blow. And as well as its men, has it wealth at home? Yes, they have enormous amounts of silver treasures in their soil. And are they good at uh, archery? No, not at all. They carry stout shields and fight hand with hand with spears. But who shepherds them? What master do their ranks obey? Master! They are not yeah, master! Yeah, master. Yeah, yeah. And can they master us? Resist invasion? Yes! Those is vast and noble army they destroyed. To those who have sons with the army now, your words bring fearful thoughts. I mistake it not, great queen. Soon we will know the truth, for a Persian courier arrives. Good or bad, he will bring us news. Ceilings of wide Asia, love Persian earth, haven of ample wealth, will blow to from your happy pride. The flower of all your youth has fallen. To bring First news of defeat is an evil fate. Yet I must unfold this whole disastrous truth. Persians, your country's fleet and army are no more. No, no, no. Me. I cannot be. Yes, all my 
the ovens, love. Have the light or the light. Beyond all hope. And have come back. Sirs. I was there. What I have told, I saw for myself. And I can recount each detail of the whole great defeat. Speak. The shores of silence. And all the neighbouring coasts were strewn with bodies miserably done to death. Our bones and our bones were no help. They overwhelmed my crashing pride. I saw a nation sink and die. What name could be more hateful to my ears than Salamis? Athens. The name of anguish and our misery. The councillors have kept silence all this while, stunned with misfortune. This news is too terrible for narrative or question. But being mortal, we must endure grief when the gods sent it. Therefore, tell us the whole story. Let your voice be choked with tears. Who is not dead? And who amongst our generals must we mourn, whose post-death leaves are manned? Zeus the king lives. Then the spirit of hope lives for my house. Bless and fire! First in their ranks, the hordes. The sea one fringes of Ajax's island home. Three more. Lilius. Ah! Yeah! Lilius, Artemis, Artegas, struck down. Can now be seen heading round the Isle of Dove, butting the granite rocks. Metalus the Christian, who led 10,000 foot and 13,000 horse. When he died, his thick, shaggy yellow beard aside, blood red, dipped in the crimson sea. <laughs> Magus the Arabian is dead. Fires, captain of five times fifty ships. His handsome face met none handsome end, poor wretch. I'm buried, Dionysus. The bravest captain of the all. Catch the Cilician troops. <laughs> he struck down more enemies than any other with a single hand and won great glory. And is dead. <laughs> Such is the number of officers who met their fate that I tell of only few and many thousand deaths. The voice of number of the Greek ships, the dead attack of fleets. The Greek ships, 300 vessels they've been sad into their strength. And Xerxes had now had a thousand in command, 207 of which were particularly fast ships. These are the proportions. Now do you say it's impossible to weak a force? No. Oh. No. The results show with what partial hands of God laid down the scale against us and destroyed us all. It is the gods that keep up being sick and safe. What well, say? This happens not their ravaged after all. While she has men, humble ones. <laughs> They stand unmoved. But who attacked first? Was it the Greeks or my bold son, exalted with his countless ships? Your bold son? Neither, my queen. Some fury, some malignant power appeared and put in train the whole disastrous rat. Helena from the Athenian army came and told your son Xerxes this tale. That when the shades of night set in, the Hellenes, they would not stay, but they leap aboard, and by whatever secret route became available to them, sail for their lives. Your son, with no thought to the man's guard or the jealousy of the gods, sent this word to all the Persian captains. With the sun, no longer flames to warm the earth, and darkness rules the courts of heaven. Range the main body of your fleet threefold. To guard the outlets on the choppy streets. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I'm saying? And then he said, Our ships to sail all around the island, threatening the Athenians found a way through to save themselves from death. He would chop off the head of every Persian captain. With these words, he showed 
how his ignorance of the God's intent to dazed his mind. The crews, correctly in the beginning, were getting their supper. Each oarsman looped his oar to the smooth rowing pin. And as the sun went down and night came on, they all embarked with all the heavily armed soldiers. Or chiefly, they called each other on, rowing on course as they were ordered. All night long, the captains kept them rowing on course, backwards and forwards across the strait. The night was fading. And still the Hellenes showed no sign of escaping unnoticed. And then above the earth rose the white horses of the day, filling the air with beauty. And then from the Hellenes' side rose like a song of joy, a piercing bound cry, and from the island crags echoed an answering shout. Well, the Persians, yes, they realized their mistake and fear filled every man. They were no fugitives that sang that terrifying pain, but elites charging with courageous hearts to battle. They lied, they lied trumpet, they flamed along their ranks. And then all at once, in a single pulse, their frothy oars beat against the salty waves of the boatman's chant. Then <laughs> the whole fleet hove clear into view. First on their right wing, in perfect order. And then the whole array came out. And on my ears, Started definitely shy. Forward to my Not yet. 
half told. Be sure what follows twice I've made your way before. What can be worse? There's an island. Opposite to us. Smaller. Useless for anchorage. But Pan, the dancer, treads along the briny shore. There Xerxes sent them, thinking that when the enemy flung from their ship, the Persian forces could easily spread them down and rescue the drowning men from the sea. Fate misjudged when in the sea battle heaven had honoured the Hellenes. On the same day they came, armed with their bronze shields and swords, easily gained the island beach and circled the whole island. So men, they just don't, they didn't know which way to turn. First, a shower of blows from stones flung by hand. And then from the pulled bowstring, arrows sent forth to slaughter. And then in one final roar, they rushed to them and they cast and they cast their limbs like butchers. So every last Man lay dead. <laughs> the death of this horror. Your son, <laughs> your son, Xerxes saw <laughs> by the sea. Up on a high hill, he stood where he could completely see. He could completely see everything. His whole force by land and sea. He groaned and he moaned and he tore his clothes and instantly dismissed the whole fleet, hastening through disordered flight. Now tell me, does this then not bring you more misery to mingle with the first? Our crews, the captains of remaining ships, spread sail and fled with a tailing wind. The remnants of the army, although we suffered greatly from exhaustion, thirst, and hunger, made it up to focus where cruel Spurcius winds through the dusty plain. At least those who died there died without first. Those who took good made it up to Etonia, in the mountains up in Etonia. That night, some god won't winter long before its time. And only Strymon became frostbound. Men. Previously non believers. They fell to their knees in worship of the earth and heaven. From the ark rose innumerable prayers. Across the firm ice, they made their way. Those were to made it across before the sun shed abroad its sacred beams were saved. But so his rays shone out like piercing flames, melting the ice midstream. They slept. Man, he told man into the icy water. I tell you. Those who made it, quickly, they were the luckiest. The handful of us were left, although we suffered great hardship, 
eventually made it up to France, and at least back to our own holy land. So may well the cities of Persia mourn their young men lost. But I tell the truth, but only half of all the evil God sent to strike Persia down. Oh, fatal spirit of destruction! Cruelly you have attacked and trampled the whole Persian race! Army oh, is destroyed and gone! Oh, bet I will! Oh, bet I will! But in the darkness of my sin, I'm pleading you for one.
people counsel us. Bounties for his life. 
how swiftly are fulfilled ancient prophecies. On my son has fallen the issue of those oracles that I trusted that God would defer for many years. But heaven will partake for glorial with man's own zeal. Now, upon my whole house, as I had to cease the spring of grief, and my son, my son is the cause of it all. He would chain the house on with fetters like a slave. He would rest nature, bind the sea to make us Right by his prince. He and his immortal folly would defy the gods, even Poseidon. Was this not some madness that befell him? Now I fear my hard earned wealth will fall prey for the first blunderer. Since he's the rash learned folly, he fools company. They told him you, with your sword, had won gold for your children, while he, like a coward, gaining no increase, paid the warrior at home. He planned this march on Hellas, this vast armament, swayed by the ceaseless slanders of such evil men. Hence this disaster, unforgettable, complete, measureless, Never such a desolation since Zeus first ordained that one man holding throne and scepter should be lord over all of air, Asia's pasture plains. Many troops I had, many campaigns I led, but never dealt my land such a blow as this. Sexes must son is young, and with his young man's mind he forgets all of my instructions. Look you well, my counsellors. Look and you will not see all we kings together to Persia so much harm. King Dalif, what direction should we take from what you said? How? What should we do? Nothing! Nothing? Even though your boss be twice as size, never take up arms against us again. You cannot win. Even their land fights on their side. Oh, why is on their side, my love? The land is lean and killed with famine. Mm. Any force more of moderate size. Who is that a big for? Easily survived. Even knows that our men shall not come home safely. You, how many, will return. If we learn one thing from today, to trust divine prophecy, that all will be fulfilled to the last judge. Therefore it is in vain that sex is leave to hide the choices of his men. For there on the Pishbosian plain they wait, and there wait to ruin, and untold pain, which they must endure. The just reward for pride and godless insolence are on their march through the Hellas. Without scruple they destroy temples, altars, sacred precincts, and their sacrilege will be matched in suffering. And more will follow. For the wellspring of their pain is not yet dry. The Dorian lance will pour blood in ceaseless measure in sacrifice. Dead heaped upon dead for three generations hence will bear witness that man is mortal and must learn to curb his pride. For pride will blossom, and 
this better harvest will be tears. The whole death folly and his recompense I never forget. Zeus throned on high sternly chastises boastful and arrogant men. And you, my lovely wife, his mother, go unto the house and fetch seemly clothes for him. Our son, for those he hath about him, are torn in his anguish. For your, your voice alone I know will soothe and calm him. Now, I must return to the nether darkness. Counselors, farewell. And let your talk, let your soul taste the other these day's pleasures. For all abundance, Cause no profit for the dead. Ah, we're 
turned to hide my head. My trembling limbs have lost their use of his great men. I tell you what he put it on me, he's mad! And Zaxxas, who has spared hell's ugly jaws and virgin's dead, the nation's pride! Ionia and his spoiled us! Strong in the metal warships! But it was Ares, the god of war! Comfort. No! Oh. 